Hey guys, my name is Christine and I am a GXI from 24 Hour Fitness in Austin, Texas. Today we're going to be doing a body weight workout. We'll start with a nice warm up and then we're going to do a series of movements where we're going to integrate using not just our core but also our upper body and our lower body. You do have the option to add weight to this at any time if you really want to using kettlebells or handheld weights or something else you've got hanging out around the house, but you're perfectly fine to do this with body weight. I'll offer lots of modifications and typically what we'll do is we'll go through a really long series where we do everything on one side then we'll repeat that on the other side adding some different options here and there maybe a little bit more plyometric movement so again if you don't want to jump you also have the option to remove the jumping from this as well so let's go ahead and start with a nice body weight warm-up we're gonna be sitting the hips back into our squat keeping our chest lifted our knees safe tracking over the second and third toe as the butt goes back bracing the core to protect the low back and just sitting back here nice and easy so as you're getting warm, maybe your chair, that your, your imaginary chair that you sit into for your squat is a little higher. As we get warmer, maybe we sink a lot lower. We start to feel like we're good to do that. You know what you've done already today. Maybe this isn't your first workout. Maybe it's the very first one. So you know how much you need to go into that with trepidation, being a little more cautious, or if you need to go into it all out. So let's take just two more squats here, and then we're gonna switch into some lunges. So we're gonna step one foot back, feet are in line with your hips, sink down, lift up, and step in. So you're just gonna take some alternating lunges here at first. Again, just like the squat, you are in control of how deeply you take your lunge. If you want more work, if you're ready for that, go a little deeper. If you don't want that, stay a little higher. Make it a shallow lunge. Whatever you do, make sure that your feet are hip width apart. We're not walking a tightrope, it's more like train tracks. When we sink that back knee down, the shoulders stay over the hips, they don't pitch forward over the front leg. And at the bottom, if we're able to do it, once we get a little deeper, maybe we've got our front thigh here parallel to the floor, and then maybe the back knee and front knee are both at 90 degrees. So you decide, just keep your knee safe and your chest lifted. Instead of pushing forward with that front knee, we want to think about sinking the back knee down to lower us, lift us, and come back in. Let's take one more on each leg, and then we're going to combine our squats and our lunges. So we take one squat, we take one lunge, one squat, and one lunge. And we're going to keep doing that for a little bit. So sit back, step back, drop down, lift up, sit back, step back, drop down, lift up. Let's do that a few more times. I'll try not to give you numbers because as my regular students know, I'm a big old liar. When I say a couple, that almost always means four. <laughs> And uh, we just met each other maybe. So I wanna make sure that you know you trust me, at least at first, as best you can. Trust your fitness instructor, right? And let's take one more squat and let's take one more lunge. And in and up. Okay, so now we're going to move into some inchworms here. So we're gonna keep our legs as straight as we can the whole time. Coming down, walking out to a plank walking back to the toes and standing up. Now, if you have any blood pressure issues, maybe just stay down here and don't stand up or take it a little bit slower than I am. So when you come out into your plank, make sure that you're taking your hands down right under your shoulders. So we've got good alignment. Walk back through your palms, come up. When we walk out, we're gonna say hello to our hamstrings, find that length in the back of the leg when we walk out and when we walk in, we're getting our shoulders pushing back through the palms, feeling the back as well. And let's take just one more of these. The next time that you walk out, I want you to stay in your plank. So let's stay in the plank. Hold your plank. Give you my side view here. We're going to push back into a down dog. We're going to reach the hand back for the opposite leg. Back to your plank. Reach back. Now, you might be reaching back for your thigh here. You might be reaching back for your calf. You might be reaching back 
for your ankle, you know, you know where you're at, but push back with your chest, hike your hips up and take that little bit of a rotation as you reach back, not a huge one. And of course, we also have this option, which is to kind of just push back and come front and maybe little twist under. So we can adapt this to wherever we need to, right? But just keep thinking about pushing back and getting a little twist. One more each side. And then let's go ahead and bring ourselves to our knees. Take your hands wide and drop down for a modified push up. Now, if you wanna go ahead and take your knees up, you're welcome to do that at any time. We're just getting warm. So drop the chest to elbow height, practice keeping your neck long, pull your belly into your spine, keep your abs engaged, and don't let your hips hike up too high or drop down too low. All right, now let's bring the chest all the way down, lift the palms, squeeze the upper back, lift the legs, squeeze the low back and glutes. Everything drops down, pushing up either with the knees down or all the way up. So we come down, lift, palms down, press or down, lift, palms down, press, just upper body. Down, squeeze, down, press. Last one, down, squeeze, down, press. All right, hopefully you're warm. Upper body, core, lower body. Everything's ready to go, because that's what we got next. So we are gonna start kneeling. Um, because of that, you may decide that you wanna double up a mat if you're on one, or maybe take a towel or something else soft, even a pillow they've got hanging around to put under your knees for the first couple of exercises here. So we're gonna start with our hands crossed over, possibly, and we're gonna hinge back and pull forward. So at, when we do these hip hinges, we're not trying to sit our butt to our heels. We're gonna lean back and then use the front of the leg, the quad, to pull us up tall again. So it's not a swing, it's not a sway, it's not momentum. It's simply a lean. So I'm hinging back, quads pull me up. Now this might feel too easy to you. If it does, remember I mentioned you could have some weights. So we could hold a weight at our chest. We could also have one on each shoulder. Uh, we could even have them down by the sides. So you just wanna make sure you don't start dumping them back to your heels. But think about using the front of your body to pull you back up. Or think of a board behind you, right? And the board is keeping your spine in one line. And then we squeeze to the top. So we're activating our quads. Now, we're gonna take two more. And then our right leg is our first leading leg. And uh, I'll change this when I turn towards you so we don't have to think too hard about what we're doing. Let's take, see I lied, two more. <laughs> and we're gonna start with the right leg moving forward, just the right leg every time first. So we're gonna take the right foot up. Left foot up, right knee down, left knee down. So it's right, left, right, left. Now again, I could have a weight or something else, a kettlebell right here at my chest. I could also have one on each shoulder. I could also have one down in each hand as I come up. Notice how low I'm staying with my knees safe in a low squat. You could be going up higher and then coming back down again if you like. If this is too much, we can stick with just squats. That's where we're gonna go eventually. The next time we do this, I'll face you. Let's take two more for real, no tricks today. And let's stand all the way up. So now we're gonna sit into some squats again like we did in the warm up. So again, maybe I have some weights, maybe I have nothing, I'm just using my body weight. What we're gonna do is add a jump. So we're gonna squat and jump. So I'm not gonna do too many of these. We could do a whole lot more than what I'm doing here. You could pause this and then pick it back up and uh, move on with more cardio in here by doing more squat jumps if you wanted. If you don't wanna jump, fire through, come to the toes. You could also lift a knee and lift a knee, right? So you've got a lot of choices. I want you to take two more of whatever it is you're doing. And then we're gonna change this to a burpee. So hands down, shoot the hips back, jump in, stand, no jump at first. Or walk back, 
walk in, stand, right? So we sit back, step or jump, step or jump, stand. Sit back, step or jump, step or jump, stand. Either one. When you're ready, let's add a little jump at the top. Or if we don't wanna jump, out in just like before, drive through the hips, propel, come into the toes. All right, let's take two more, for real. Just two. And then we are moving back down to the mat. So let's come back down and we're gonna move into some tricep push-ups. So this time, instead of the hands wide, elbows by the ribs, knees or toes. We're dropping our chest to the elbow height and pressing up. So we come down and up. Heart is still high. Don't worry, we're gonna keep it there. Elbows graze your ribs. You could be on your toes if you want to. I'm gonna show you modified first this time. So again, you can also go slower if that's your desire. And we're gonna add on. So now I want you to either jump, come back, push up, or I can jump, come back, push up, or I can walk and push up here too. So I'm gonna show all three of those again. Keep going, whichever one works. And I want you to just give me two more of whatever you're doing, even if we're not doing it at the same pace. Last one. Ooh. All right. Moving to seated. Now that your heart rate's up nice and high, we're gonna bring it back down, do some leg work, and then go to the other side. So we are seated. We're gonna keep that right leg as our leading leg until we switch sides. So pull your left knee into your chest, give it a little hug, sit tall, flex your right foot, and then take your toes up towards the ceiling. So big flex, squeeze your quad, lift your knee as high as you can here. It's gonna take a few reps possibly before you really feel that quad firing up, but we're gonna stay here long enough, hopefully, to get you to a place where you are feeling it. So let's take two more for real, not a couple, but two, if you know my counting scheme. And now we're gonna lift up, we're gonna fan out come in and put it down. So squeeze and lift, fan to the side, back in and lower. By now you should be feeling it. You might be hugging your leg a little bit tighter just to deal with it. In and down. Again, lift, squeeze, back in, lower. I want two more. And now one more. And then I want you to take this leg back up and pulse it up, up, up up for four, three, two, and one. And if you want to, before we switch sides, come over to your side, pull your heel towards your bottom, just get a little stretch for your quad. And now we take the other side. So we go ahead and start in that kneeling position. I'm gonna start facing side. So I've got my hands here, or here with weights, or here with one weight, or here with two weights. Hinge back and pull up. So find your quads, they're gonna grip and pull you to the top. We lean back, quads pull us to the top. We hinge back and pull up. There is an invisible board behind you. You're leaning against it and then you're pulling yourself forward using the top of your legs. So it's not about the booty, right? We could do that, but we won't do that today because I've decided not to do that today. Let's do just a few more here. So we're gonna come back and up. And in my language, you know, a few is non-committal. I can change my mind at any time about how many reps I want you to do because that's how I roll. Give me one more. And then let's start with that left foot coming forward first into those get-ups. So again, I might have weights in each hand. I might have a weight on each shoulder. I might have one weight 
here in the center. I might stay low like I am, or I might decide, you know what, I'm gonna stand all the way up. I might also decide that I wanna squat because kneeling is really not comfortable for my knees. So that is still an option as well. And let's just take a few more coming up and coming back down. So you're still on your left. I'm mirroring you. And let's take two more for real. Whatever you got, right? Maybe you're just crossed over here. Next time you come up, you stay up. So let's come up, stay, and let's squat again. Squat and lift. So if you were good to jump last time, fantastic, we're gonna add on. If you were not good to jump last time, stick with the options that work best for you and your body. So we're gonna add those now, either to the toes or maybe with a knee up at a time, maybe with a jump. Now, if that feels okay, let's try this. Let's take a squat, regular jump, squat, <laughs> squat, tuck jump, sit, regular, tuck. So it's a regular straight jump and then a tuck jump. Now you can slow it down as well, like I just did. I had to take a moment to wrap my brain around it, get my heart and my lungs to cooperate with me while I speak. And maybe you need to do that too. Or maybe you're a rock star and you're cranking it up. If you're not comfortable with doing any kind of jumping, maybe you go here once and then do a set of these, right? So maybe that's my straight jump and this is my tuck jump. Or it's a real straight jump and a real tuck jump, right? Let's do it one more time. One more of whatever it is you're doing. And now let's go to our burpees. So again, sit back, step or jump, stand. Sit back, step or jump, stand or drive the hips. If you're ready to do a little jumping or mock jumping, right? Here. If you're good with that, then let's try a tuck jump, right? If you're not good with this guy, then how about we go up one knee, other knee, and then we walk back again, okay? So you choose, maybe you're just sticking with a regular jump. Let's do one more. All right, back to the ground, back to the ground. So last time, Focus was tricep push-ups. This time, I want a regular. So, hands wide, dropping down, chest to elbow crease, staying there, knees or toes, the whole time if you need to. If you need to, maybe it's even more of a table, right? We can do that as well. As long as, if you're watching, make sure that you are sinking your chest your belly is pulled into your spine and it's not this. You see how this is different? I'm arching my back. I want to take my chest with me, more like a teeter-totter, right? Um, or I'm here, or if I'm on my toes, or even if I'm not and I want to add a little plyo here, I can go down and up. I can go down and up, jack. Down and up, jack. Option one. Option two coming, I can go down and in, out and in. Okay, option three, a little bit bigger, I can hop out, in and up, out and down, in and up. How about two more? And last one, and up. Woo, all right. Hopefully, you're sweaty with me. Let's go ahead and sit. And we're gonna take our left leg out now. So pull your leg in close, give it a nice big hug, like you love all the things it can do for you. Flex the left big toe, left side of toes, not just the big one. <laughs> Think about taking your toes to your shin and lift your leg up high. So again, we're gonna shoot for as high as we can go without compromising our posture, <clears throat> without leaning back. 
<clears throat> and without losing our neck. So keep everything lifted. Take it up as high as you're able to take it without doing anything strange for the rest of your body. It's just this leg. And see, you're able to take it really high now, right? At least I am, because I'm mirroring you, it's a secret. It's actually not my left, it's my right. Don't think too hard about that. Take it up. And then let's add the fan. So let's take it up, out, in, and down. Lift high, swing wide, back in, and down. Now when I say swing wide, just a figure of speech, I don't really want you to swing. Control it, take it out, squeeze it in, drop it down. So lift, out, in, and lower. Just a couple more, right? You're speaking my language now? So we have two of these left. Up, out, in, oh, big squeeze, one more. Up, out, in, now lift it and pulse it. Up, so guess what? We did everything on that side, now on this side, so that means we get a new series. In four, three, two, and one. Oh, shake it out, maybe come over to the side and pull your heel in. You can also lay on your stomach if you're not comfortable laying on your side. Or you can use a towel or a strap to connect to your foot if that's problematic. Okay, so what we got next? We are moving on, but we're gonna start with core since we're already on the ground and our heart rate's not quite as crazy high as it was when we were jumping around and adding all that plyometric stuff. So let's lay on our back. And um, we are going to start with the legs up and a single leg drop. So we're gonna take one leg down and up, other leg down and up. Now my foot does not have to touch the floor. Um, it might, but it doesn't have to. And if my low back needs a little extra cushion or my hips, I can take my hands underneath here and give them that little bit of extra. It also tilts my hips back. So if I'm popping when I drop that leg, that little click in the hip, um, that usually, not always, but a lot of times will eliminate it. So that might be something you like to do. And then of course, another option for you is to do this, to bend your knees to 90 and tap your toes so you have a shorter lever. That will help you out if you need it, but you don't have to do this. So let's just take a few more here. And then whatever option you've taken, I'd like you to drop one leg. We're gonna say it's your right leg. We're gonna keep it there, wrap the hands behind the head, and we're gonna crunch here. We're gonna keep our legs as straight as we can. Couple of options here if this feels like too much. Option one, drop this bottom foot. Option two, drop this one as well. And then it's kind of like an offset regular crunch, right? So take the one you need and let's just take two more. That should be pretty tough to do. And now stay down. Now we are going to take a reverse crunch. Hardest option first. Keep it in an L. Lift up. Lift up. Think about trying to punch the ceiling with your top foot. Option two, pull that straight leg, that low leg, into your uh, rib cage and stay there. Option three, both legs up and reverse crunch here. Notice it's not a rock. I'm gonna push those ceiling tiles up with my feet. Push them up, push them up. Let's take two more, whatever it is you're doing. And then let's go ahead and take the feet down. Now, I'm gonna keep that leg I had down, which if you're with me, it's the right. I'm gonna keep it there. I'm gonna take my right hand down by my hips. I'm gonna take my left arm up and then I'm gonna sit here in a half get up. If you have a kettlebell or a lightweight, put it in this hand and we're gonna press up here. So we're getting a lot of work for the core, nice and deep thinking about kind of functional movement, right? Um, you probably don't get up out of bed like this or off of the couch like this, or if you've been laying on the ground watching TV, <laughs> uh, you know, probably don't do it this way. But if you needed to get up really fast and you were holding a random object over your head, you could. <laughs> but either way, it's good for getting that core strength. And of course, if you've got something too heavy here, you may feel it a little more than you want to in your shoulders. You can always drop it. I promise, even without holding anything, I feel something here. If you try that, you'll notice it. Let's take one more. Good, and now let's stand. All right, so again, my right leg is my lead leg. I'm gonna get back into my legs, and I'm gonna keep my right foot in front. 
I'm gonna take my left foot back and I'm gonna take lunges in a split stance, right? So I'm just gonna sink down and rise up. Now, I can do it this way the whole time as I feel ready, adding a little more work. I can squat and I can jump, or I, lunge is a better word for that, but I can sink and swing. Now, if the jumping part is not something you're feeling, then how about this? Let's come down and lift, down, tap in. So when you tap in, dig into your front heel, squeeze your quad and pull forward, right? So without jumping, I can still get a little deeper in my leg. Your choice. You guys are crazy. You want a little more. Click your heels, right? Click your heels. You're gonna have to take a little pause in between, but get down low, fire up, and explode and come back down. Keep your hips and your chest squared in the same direction you're moving. Let's do one more of those. Okay, whatever option you chose, step in, front facing it first for me, then I'll turn to the side for you. We're gonna lift one leg up, balancing on the right leg, extend that leg out, bend it in, hinge forward, push it back. Starting over, pull it in, extend it out, bend it in, hinge forward, push back. So I can keep my hands at my hips or take my heart center, extend, bend in, push it back. Could I do this with weights? Absolutely. In, extend, bend in, push back. Two more for real. In, I can also touch down in between. I'll show that in a second. In, I could tap back. I could go here, really low, right back here, and tap back, see I lied already, one more. In, extend, in, and push back. Okay, pull that leg in, step out wide for a plie. We're coming down and up. So now I'm gonna hit my inner thighs. I'm gonna push my knees back. So I open up my hips, shoulders stay over my hips. I'm gonna sink down and rise up. So as I sink and rise, shoulders staying over my hips, and then I'm gonna add a little bit here. So the first thing I'm gonna add, call this a sumo deadlift. And if I had a weight, I would use a weight or two. I'm gonna to come to the bottom of that um, plie squat, hinge forward, maybe I touch down or maybe I take weights down. And then with a the flat back, I pull back up. So I'm gonna stay at the bottom of that plie, tip to a deadlift, come back up. Tip to a deadlift, come back up. Again, we could tip to a deadlift, come back up, right? So only thing moving and changing is my upper body, I hip hinge, I come up. My knees are safe, my chest goes forward. Long flat back and lift. How about two more here? And then last. And now I'm gonna plie and sweep across, plie, sweep across. Now this is my lower impact option if I want it. I'm just gonna drag my heel across the other foot. Keep the hips and chest squared to your device. If you want more, we'll make this a gate swing. So that's gonna be plie, squeeze, and squeeze. So you're gonna jump, cross your feet. Head up, hips lifted. So let's take four, three, two, and one. Okay, are we done? No, we're not. Let's take an inchworm out. So walking out like we did in the warm up. Walking back. Don't have to stand all the way up this time. Walking out and walking back. How can we make this harder? Take your left foot back. Keep your weight in this leg. Maybe keep your toes down. Drag it with you and then walk it back. If you feel pretty confident, take your foot up, walk it out and walk it back. So I can keep my foot as low or high as I like but I'm gonna focus on this bottom leg, right? Walk it out and walk it back. And let's take just one more. This time stay out and then hold your plank. So in holding a plank, hands under shoulders, under wrists and elbows, everything in one line, belly into spine, neck long, knees can be down like mine are, or, of course, squeeze your quads, pull the knees to the ceiling, 
and hold. If you're comfortable with it, how about some jacks? If we're not okay with a jack, let's tap, or even from that modified option, we tap for four, three, two, and one. All right, so let's do the other side now, yes? Let's lay back. Last time, we were thinking about keeping the right leg as the one we were focused on this time as the left. So, however, we're starting with both legs up, single leg drop, down and up, down and up. And again, we only go as low as we can with that leg without the low back lifting, right? If the low back lifts, we've gone too far. Down and lift. Of course, still that option, bent knee, more of a tabletop, tapping the toes, shorter lever. We did a lot with your hip flexors at the beginning. They might be screaming right now, and if they are, you take care of them, but also push yourself, right? If they were screaming, then you know that that's an area you wanna work on stretching and strengthening. So maybe do this video a few times until you feel like you're getting stronger, and then we can start adding more of this stuff and keeping the legs straight the whole time. All right, let's take one more on each side. And then now we've got our left leg dropping into that L, hands behind the head, and we're crunching up and down, sliding the ribs to the hips. If we can, we keep both legs nice and straight, bottom leg floating off of the floor. If we need to, we put the foot down, and it should be intense enough that you get this little shake at the top. If we need to, we can bend this knee as well, or we can keep that leg out, foot down. We can put the top foot down, whatever you need to do. Maybe even both legs up, right? Just a regular crunch if that's where you're at. Give me two, and last one. All right, fun reverse crunches in an L, lifting the hips, pushing the ceiling tile up with your top foot, or maybe we're gonna pull this knee into the ribs, and we're gonna reverse crunch here with a kind of mid-range option there without that longer lever hanging out low to the floor. Or maybe we're gonna take both legs up and press the ceiling tiles up with both feet. All right, I just want you to give me a couple more here. And remember, are we counting? Because a couple for me means four. Now it's two and now it's one. All right, take the left leg down, bend your right knee. And just like before, we've got this hand down right next to that extended leg, other hand up. Maybe we're holding a kettlebell or a lightweight. Maybe we're just taking our hand up like, hallelujah, I'm done. And we're gonna come up and lay back. So we lift and lower. So here's the good news. Everything you're doing is the last time you're doing it. We are almost done. We have to get through this series with a few extra bells and whistles. And then we are finished with this workout. So. Try to keep this hand light if you can. If you need a little more assistance, yeah, sure, push out of it. But think about kind of pressing into the heel of the hand, bending your elbow, and using your tricep more than your shoulder. Um, but if you can, see how I have my hand kind of floating off the floor, maybe even grazing the leg to make sure that I'm not cheating there and I'm using my abs because that's what we want to focus on right now. And let's take one more. And done. All right, stay up. Stand. Okie dokie. So now, left leg, right? Take it in front, split stance lunge. Just stationary, no back stepping unless you take in that option when we start to jump. So shoulders over hips, push your back hip forward. You might find that you start to tip forward a little bit because we're getting a little tight from some of that lower ab work we've been doing. But we'll try to stay as tall as we can. And again, we're coming down, feet in line with hips as you're ready. Swing, sink and swing. So I can also make it kind of shallow if I want to. I can do just a little bend and a lift, or I can get really low and fire up. If I don't want to jump at all, maybe I come down and up, and then I tap in. So I take a lunge, dig into this heel, and pull in using my quad and my glute, drive in, step back. Down, up, drive in, step back. So. Another thing is, you know, maybe you're good to jump for like four reps and then you're like, you know, I'm kind of tired, Christine. I don't want to keep doing that. <laughs> so then maybe after a little bit, you take this option. So you're still burning, 
but your heart rate's coming down a little bit. And then when you're ready, you add jumping again. And if you're really ambitious, we go here. So options, right? Pick the one you like. Let's take four more, three more, maybe it's that, two more, and last one. I gotta do two so I don't cheat, and in. All right, shake it out, shake it out. This leg is your standing leg. Let's get that balance work. So, softness in this knee is not locked. Chest is lifted. We lift the other leg up, extend it, bend it, push it back, hinge, right? Or hands here. Extend, bend, push back. Or maybe it's here, touching down in between. Extend low, touch down in between, tap back. I can still use this leg to pull forward, extend, I can touch between and push back until I'm good and I feel confident and I've built that balance and back. Two more, up, out, in, and back, showing that modification again, up, out, in, and back. Okay, step wide, flare up those toes, plies, okay, so, Again, we'll change things just a little bit. I'm still gonna give you that sumo deadlift option. And uh, are my fine haired ladies in the house? I have, my hair's always like, I can put it up before I start, but then by the time I get to the end, it's just, I'm cousin it. And then it's in my mouth and in my eyes and I don't know where it came from. Uh, <laughs> so sorry if you don't like working out with cousin it, but you know, hands up if you feel me and you know what I'm talking about. So we are gonna come down, stay, hinge, and lift. So deadlift at the bottom of that plie for that sumo deadlift. I can use weights, tip, and lift. Put the bottom corner of your shoulder blade in your back pocket so your back stays long, your neck stays long, your back stays flat, and we just hinge and rise. Let's take two and last one. Okay, here's what I want now. As low as you can, reach high. As low as you can, reach high. You might take your feet in a little closer together or pull them a little farther apart. Just make sure your knees don't go past your toes. We can stay here and lift. We can go here and lift, here and lift. So starting with some options. And again, we don't have to change anything ever. Down, up. Or maybe we start to go down, up, down, up. Maybe we start to go here, down, up. Or we can even go in and up, in, up. Or stick with these, stick with these. And then we can also gate swing if we wanna jump with the feet in, but we don't wanna jump, right? <laughs> So whatever you like, showing you a bunch of options. Here or here. Or you might still be doing this. Here and here. Give me one more and then let's meet back down on the ground. So, uh, oh, I cheated you. Let's get the other side. This is like a real class. Okay, we gotta do our inchworms. Then we're on the ground. So let's go ahead and start with the left leg down and the right foot just back a little. And uh, we're gonna walk out. Keep the toes down if you want to. Plank, walk back in the toes. You don't have to stand up, but you could. Walk out again and walk back. As you are more comfortable with it, Foot comes away, walk out, walk back. And we're gonna take two more for realsies. I'm done psyching you out today. And then last one, stay and hold your plank, okay? So we know our options for plank now. If you wanted to make that harder, you're good with a regular plank. Maybe we try taking a foot up while we're here, or maybe we try taking a hand up or maybe 
a foot and a hand. Just make sure you do both sides. Hold for four, three, two, and one. Let's do those plank jacks. Again, slow or fast. We can tap. We can tap. And then we're gonna add on. So, let me show you the option first. We can do two taps, and then we can come in, in, out, out. So tap, tap. Come to the toes, lift your knees, and back down. Tap, tap, feeling those quads again, right? Option, out in, tuck. Out in, tuck. Four, three, two, one. Good job. All right, push back. Take a quick stretch. Come into an extended child's pose. So hopefully you're nice and sweaty with me. Really reach those hands out long. Push your armpits towards your knees. And then let's come back up to table. So we're gonna bring our right foot forward in between our hands. Press your weight forward, make sure your knee's safe. Don't let it go past your toes. You got a straight length line from your knee through your shins to your ankle, shoulders over your hips, big stretch across the front of the back leg. We work that hip flexor a lot. Right, so let's stay here for a second. We did a little tricep work. Let's take the hands up. Drop your opposite hands to your left hand in between your shoulder blades. Take the elbow to that hand. Look up, let your head push into your arms. Tricep stretch, hip flexor as well. Keep that head lifted. And then we're about to move to the ground, kind of ninja style, because I know you can handle that. Let's go ahead and take the uh, right hand to the knee, left hand down. Take your back leg, flip it under. Give yourself a little hug here, pull it in, and let's take a twist. We're gonna look over that back shoulder, get a nice big spinal twist. Good job, good job, you guys did awesome. And let's come back to neutral. Keep this leg in front, take the other leg back. I can do 90-90, little seated hurler stretch and bring my chest forward. I can also take my back knee and extend that leg, make it a straight leg, and try to turn my kneecap down towards the ground and come out into more of a true pigeon pose here, right? So let's stay out a little longer. Just get a nice big stretch in there, release for those hips. <sighs> Slow down your breathing. And then let's press back up. Sit onto that hip and let's swing that leg back around. Guess what, that's now your front leg. I'm gonna turn so you always have my outside leg. Press your weight forward, make sure your knee is safe. Keep your shoulders over your hips. Press your weight forward to get that hip flexor. Stay tall. Find that big stretch in your hip flexor first. And then let's bring your hands up. Again, we're dropping the opposite hand in between. So if your left leg is front, drop your right hand in between your shoulder blades. Left hand to the elbow, look up, let your head push into your arms. Get your tricep along with the hip flexor, the front of your back leg. One more big breath. And let's go ahead and take our hands down. We got the hand on the thigh, other hand out to the side. Ninja leg, we come through. If you like that move, check out some mat Pilates with me. A little Pilates bar mix on the ground I'll be putting on the channel soon. Let's take a little twist. Look over the shoulder. Keep the shoulder down, keep your neck long. Think about wringing out your spine like a dish towel. Big twist. Rotate, hold. And then let's go ahead and come back into neutral. This is still my front leg. I'm gonna let that knee come down. I'm gonna take the other knee behind me, shooting for 90-90 at the very least, and bringing my chest out over that front leg. So when I come forward, if I feel a lot of pressure in my knee or my hip, um, and this is not about being um, inactive, right? This could be somebody who's super active, that has got really tight joints, or tight muscles, I should say, that gives you a lot of tension around your joints. You might um, need to take your foot closer to your pelvis to make it less intense. Uh, if you need it to be more intense, take your foot farther away. But bring your chest out, and of course, stay here if you want to, or if you want, take that back foot, reach it back, try to turn your kneecap down towards the floor, and come into more of a true pigeon. All right, let's go ahead and press back up. 
From here, we're gonna bring ourselves into a little um, seated position, a butterfly, maybe you call it, depends on what you like for that term. But we'll take the soles of the feet together, hinge forward, think about letting your knees press towards the floor, but more passively, I don't want you to do this, I want you to just kind of think about pushing your knees towards the ground away from your shoulders. You may be sitting up taller than I am, that's okay. Keep your back flat and long. And then let's go ahead and press back up again. All right, we are gonna bring those toes down, shift our weight forward, lift the hips up, let your head and neck hang. We did a little bit of work in the shoulders and chest, so let's bring the hands up. Take your fingers together or interlace your fingers, or if you have a towel or something you can take between your hands, you can do that as well. Push your arms forward. Find that big chest expansion, get that stretch across the shoulders and the chest. While you're here, you're gonna find your hamstrings getting a nice stretch too. Kind of sink into that, breathe into that, surrender to that, because we should need that after several of those moves we did that were a little deeper for the hamstrings. And then let's bring the hands back to the hips, unclasp the fingers or let go of the towel. Take your hands to your thighs, roll it up. When you get to the top, shoulders down and back. Two stretches here, really. Take your hands out, bring one arm across, grab a bobber below your elbow, keep your shoulder down away from your ear, and then let's switch. Maybe it's two and a half. Push your shoulder down away from your ear, take it out, turn your thumbs down, cross your hands over each other, shrug the shoulders, find that space between your shoulder blades, get a little shrug, and then take it straight up to finish. Grab one wrist, lean over, look under the opposite side, get your rear delt and oblique, and then come back to the top, switch your grip, same thing, other side, and then come back to the top and be cheesy with me. Big exhale out and down, and you are done. So thanks for sweating with me. Hope you got a little bit of work for the legs, abs, arms, and the heart rate, hopefully. Um, again, if you're not getting everything perfect the first time, I mean, hey, even I'm struggling and I teach a lot, but sitting on the couch for a couple of weeks and not being able to go to the gym, I mean, I run, right? But running and jumping are definitely not the same thing. Um, so, you know, we get a little bit uh, fatigued a little quicker. So maybe it takes a little bit, you know? You're not gonna be right where you were when you just left the gym because it's also weird to be in a small space. So be gentle with yourself, be kind to yourself, push yourself when you need it and use up any energy that's kind of holding you back or staying pent in, put it into your workout so that you can then go about your day and be productive and stay in good shape. And we come back to the gym and work out together, you're gonna to be successful. So I hope you enjoyed this workout. Um, I've got a couple more on the channel. I'm gonna put some more on and I hope to um, see you soon. Bye.